Yo, 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 this is sick Coach Ray doing a hard lesson today, so we got to make sure we get it on video. Um, all right, title, Finding Rational Zeros, um, but we're going to get right into it. Main thing I want you to see here is this. Um, let me get my mouse over here, too. Main thing I want you to see is this. Here, I gave you a factored form polynomial and asked you to find the zeros, and this is a super easy problem. We're just switching the signs of all of these, and we have our zeros piece of cake. Okay, what we're doing today, if you looked at example one, is this polynomial is in standard form, and I'm asking for all the zeros. So I'm not sure if it's obvious, the only way to do this problem is to switch from standard form to factored form. What the problem is, you can't factor this, or at least we can't factor this. Okay? We can factor quadratics, but anything above quadratics, we don't know how to factor. It's a very difficult, complicated process. Okay? So we need a different method of getting from standard form to factored form. And that's what I'm going to teach you today. Okay? And I beg you, even though the video is going, jump in with questions whenever you have them. If you feel like you're falling off the boat, stop me. Okay? All right, first thing, I even put steps up there. Some of you like steps. All right, step one, I want to find all the possible zeros. Let me make sure I'm clear about that, okay? If there were four factors, I would have four zeros. By the way, check this uh, standard form out. The degree is four, which means there should be four factors, which means there should be four zeros. That is going to be the case. So similar, okay? Um, so there's going to be four correct answers. But when something's in standard form, you can look at this and pull out a couple of pieces. And at least instead of, what we're going to do is guess and check the zeros, okay? We're going to guess and see if it's a zero. And if and we check it, and if it's not, we throw it away. Guess a different one, check it. If it's not, throw it away. It's, not, it's a long process. Okay? But I don't want to guess from infinity numbers. I want to at least figure out what are the possible zeros that I'm going to guess from. All right? Here's how that process looks. Okay. Uh, this is very strange, and I'm sorry for that. The leading coefficient when it comes to problems like this is called Q. I call it A. I'm not sure who decided to change the name when it comes to finding possible zeros. Um, but they call it Q. The constant, I normally call it C, they call it P. Okay, by they I mean mathematicians. I would call this A and call this C because everything we have done together, that has been A, that has been C. All right, the only reason I'm writing it like this even though I don't like it is because if you look at the explanation in Alex, they're gonna use P and Q. If you go into Khan Academy and watch a video, they're gonna use P and Q. You look in a textbook or anywhere online, you're going to see P's and Q's, so I want you to see those. All right? Um, but I, I do understand that that's kind of confusing. All right. Here's how you find possible zeros. These are going to be the numbers that I guess from and check to see if they're right. <coughs> okay? I'm going to start with Q. Q is a leading coefficient. And I'm going to write down all the factors of Q. Okay? Uh, Q is a leading coefficient, which is 1. So what are the factors of 1? Just 1 and 1, right? And you don't have to write it twice. So we just need to write that once. 1. But every single number we write down as a possible 0, we need to put the positive and the negative version. So I'm going to put plus or minus 1. Every time we write down a possible zero, we put down the positive and the negative version of that number because it could be either. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Q. Or sorry, I already did Q. I'm going to go to P. I'm going to write down all the possible factors of P. There's a lot more. What are the first two factors of P? 1 and 24. Okay, so I'm going to write them in numerical order. So 24 is actually going to be last. Okay, and I already have one. I don't need to write plus or minus one again because I already have plus or minus one. That's one of my possible zeros. I don't need to write it again. So what's the next one? Two. 
Uh, 2 and 12, so I'm going to put plus or minus 2. I'm going to write 12 further down. Next one. 3, plus or minus 3. 4 and 6, so plus or minus 4. Then under plus or minus 6. Then it was 3 times 8, so plus or minus 8. 2 times 12, plus or minus 12. Um, and then last, it was 1 times 24, so plus or minus 24. Okay. Last ones. And this is really what can make this crappy. P over Q. P over Q. You have to take all the factors of P and put them over Q and make a bunch of fractions. Okay? In this particular example, it doesn't end up being too crappy. Here's why. Nor the plus or minus, right? We're just going to write plus or minus for everything anyway. So just take the numbers. If I put 2 over 1, what is that? 2. Don't we already have 2? Go to the next one. 3 over 1. 3. I got, I got 3. If I put all of these over 1, it's just going to be all of these. <clears throat> so in this particular problem, and I'll do another one to kind of show you where this could be different, but when you put all of your factors of P over Q, we already have all of them. Okay? So I'm just going to write it like this. Does that make sense? All of these. I don't need to rewrite them all. Just so, we're, just so we're clear on, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to that in a second. Let's do one more problem that's a little bit harder, and then I'll delete it all. Let's say I got 4x to the fourth, okay, um, plus x minus 12. So I skipped some terms in there. That's fine. Okay, p is 4, q is negative 12. So let's do that. My, or sorry, q is 4. q is 4. So factors of 4, we'll do this one a little bit quicker. 1, 2, 4. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Here, let's do factors of P. 1 I already wrote. 2 I already wrote. 3. three. 2 times 6 is 12. And 12, right? Because 1 and 12. So remember, I just didn't, like, 2 is a factor of both, 4 is a factor of both, but I, I'm not writing them twice. I'm only writing them out each time. Okay, now P over Q gets crazy. Now when we do P over Q, this gets crazy. Watch very carefully. Take your first P and ignore the pluses or minus because we're just going to write plus or minus in front of everything anyway. 3 over 1. We've got to put it over each one. 3 over 1. That's 3. Do we already have it? Yep. Next one. 3 over 2. Do we have that one yet? No. Nope. So i got to do plus or minus 3 over 2. 3 over 4. Do we have that one? Nope. Okay, we did all of our 3s. We did our 3s over all of these. Go to the next one. 6. 6 over 1. Do we already have it? Yes. Yep, that's 6. 6 over 2. Do we already have it? Yes. Yep, that's 3. 6 over 4 would reduce to be 3 over 2. Already got it. Okay, that one's good. 12. 12 over 1, we already got it. That's 12. 12 over 2 is 6. Already got it. 12 over 4 is 3. Already got it. Okay, so these would be all of the possible zeros. So just so we're clear, any of these could be possible zeros to this problem. So this would be what we would start guessing and checking from to try to um, go from standard form to factored form. Yes? Okay, so you know how this is supposed to have uh, x to the third, x to the second, and x, so will we also include that to in p and q? No. So the question was involving our variables, x to the third, x squared, x, x to the fourth, all of this in our possible zeros. The answer is no. All you look at to find your possible zeros are P and Q. All the factors of Q, all the factors of P, and then all the factors of P over all the factors of Q. Okay? Now, in our next step, when it comes to guessing and checking, I'm just going to tell you, never guess the fractions. We're going to be able to figure out, if there's a fraction answer, we're going to be able to figure it out without having to guess those. Okay, that's coming up. All right? 
However, on your Alex assignment, there's either eight or nine questions. The first three just ask for all the possible zeros. So the answer would be all of these. Over here, the answer would be all of these. Okay, so the first three questions in Alex just ask for the possible zeros. All right, the next five or six questions ask you these directions of what I'm going to walk you through now. Find all zeros. But I want to pause and make sure we're all still on the boat for how to find all the possible zeros. Feeling okay? All right. Give me a racist. Uh... All right. Back to our problem. Okay? And just making sure we're clear. Here's what I've done. Oops, too far. All right, so just so we're clear, I got this big old polynomial in standard form. I know that it's going to have four factors and four zeros. Okay, I just found all of the possible zeros that it could be. So when I guess and check, I don't need to guess from all infinity numbers. I just guess from these. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. There's 16 of them here because there's a plus and minus of each. So of these 16 possibilities, four of them are going to be correct. We're going to guess and check. Okay, and I'll explain exactly how we're going to do that in a second, but I just want to make sure you understand four of these are going to be correct. Okay, now, let's say I guess the zero, x equals one. And let's, I haven't even showed you how to check it. Let's say I guess it, but I'm telling you that it's correct. Okay, what would the factor be that gave us this zero? Isabel said negative one, but factors need to be binomials, don't forget, in parentheses. There we go. X minus one would give us a factor, or sorry, a zero of X equals one. Everybody go with that? Okay, so just so you know, the game plan before I teach you how we're gonna execute it, the game plan, the big picture is to do this. I'm going to try to guess one of my zeros. Don't distract me. I'm going to guess one of my zeros. And when I guess correct, I'm going to know its factor. Okay? So what that means is I'm going to have x minus 1 times some polynomial. Okay? And it's going to be one step closer to being into factored form. And then I'm going to guess again. And let's say I guess another one right. I have x equals 1. And let's say I guess 2, and that one's correct also. Then I'm going to have x minus 1, x minus 2, and some smaller polynomial. And I'm just going to get one step closer to factored form one step at a time by figuring out one factor at a time. This is how we're going to accomplish this. Because we can't factor something that's x to the fourth. Okay? So don't let that get you caught up. This is just like a, what we're about to start trying to accomplish. All right, let's do it. All right, um, so stay with me. We had a whole assignment on this. Let's, let's stick with positive one here. If our zero is positive one, that would mean our factor is x minus one. Okay, and remember I used to ask you this question, is x minus one a factor of this? Meaning, can you do x minus one times some polynomial to get this original question. Okay? What was the key, and I'll be really excited if anybody gets this, what was the key to figuring out whether this was a factor or not? Does anybody remember? Remainder, it had to do with the remainder. Yes! If remainder was zero. Okay? If remainder was zero, then that was a factor of the whole thing. Major key. Okay, stay with me, you're about to fall off the boat. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to guess one of my possible zeros. I'm gonna, and by the way, here's my guessing strategy. I always start with the smallest whole numbers. The two smallest whole numbers are positive and negative one. I'm going to guess both of those first. The next two smallest whole numbers, positive and negative two, that's what I'm going to guess next. 
and I'm going to keep going. I never guess the fractions if I have them. I always start with the smallest whole numbers. Okay, here's why. It's a bunch of factors timesing by each other. If we had 12s and 24s multiplying by each other, these numbers would be a lot bigger than 2, 13, 14, 24. Okay, so when you see relatively small numbers like this that aren't in the hundreds, it's usually smaller numbers multiplying together to give you these. All right, so we're going to start with 1. Let me get my synthetic division set up. Uh, x to the fourth is my biggest exponent, so that gets 1. x to the third is 2. x squared is negative 13. Next is negative 14, and my constant is positive 24. And amazing job, Daniel. What he said is if I do this synthetic division and I get a remainder of 0, that means that x minus 1 times this polynomial equals this with no remainder, meaning it is a factor. That is one of the factors that I can write down. Let's check it. Bring down my 1. Multiply. Combine. Multiply. Combine. Multiply. Combine. Yes! Yes! Out of all of those possible zeros, we guessed one of them on the first try. Dang. All right. Let's see what we got. So, this is my remainder. This is my constant, my x term, my x squared term, my x cubed term. Okay, let me write what I got. If the zero is 1, the factor is x minus 1 times this, 1x cubed plus 3x squared minus 10x minus 24. What I have just written down is this. This factor times this polynomial, this whole red line, is the exact same thing as the original problem, only I'm one step closer to factored form. Questions? I need to find another factor. I need to find another factor. Watch what I do. Okay, check this out. Those numbers are a little bit different than when I wrote in there the first time I did synthetic division. Look what I did. I already found this factor and it's already kind of pulled out front. I just need this x cubed factor down. So I just need to find a factor of this x cubed problem. So now it gets a little bit easier, a little bit smaller of a problem. Okay, um, so now I don't need to use the original problem anymore. I can just use what's left. All right, I always do this. I always keep guessing the smallest numbers. I tried 1, so now I'm going to try negative 1. Okay? What am I looking for to see if the answer is negative 1? Remainder of 0. Okay, so let's check this out. Bring the 1 down. Multiply, combine. Positive 12. Nope. I'm going to have a remainder of negative 12. Okay? With my pencil, I usually just erase this stuff. Okay? And leave that so that I can keep going. All right, on to the next one. I'm going to guess 2. That's my next smallest one. Okay, drop this guy, multiply. 5, 10. Ooh, this is going to be 0, but uh, remainder is not going to be 0 because negative 24 plus 0 is negative 24. Okay, got to keep guessing. Next one I'm going to guess. I guess 2. Now I'm going to guess negative 2. 1. Negative 2, 1, negative 2, negative 12. Whoa! Whoa. Yes! When you're doing these problems, finding a remainder of 0 is a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's write down what I got. Don't forget, I had this, I had this factor right here. X minus 1, that guy's still chilling out there. I just found a new factor. If the 0 is negative 2... The factor is x plus 2. Let me write what's left. Here's my constant, my x term, my x squared. So I've got 1x squared plus 1x minus 12. 
this red line is the same as the original problem. It's just one step closer to factored form. I could try synthetic division again, but when you get down to a quadratic, you should know how to factor quadratics. I think it'd be a lot easier to do this. Okay, stay with me. In order to get x squared, I got x times x. To get negative 12, 2 and 6, 4 and 3, 1 and 12, I always guess the numbers that are closest together. So I'm going to guess 3 and 4. Okay, this box is 3x, this box is 4x. Can I make a positive 1x out of those? Yep. I need positive 4x. I need negative 3x. So what I've just done is factored this. This is x minus 3 times x plus 4. Okay, I've got these guys. And it took a lot of work, but this is so beautiful. I have taken that giant polynomial and changed it to factored form. Remind me what the original question asked me to do. Find all the zeros. Find all the zeros. Super easy from here, though. Okay, let's... Close this out. Thank you guys for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and get push notifications. See you guys later. Deuces.